I'm Leah Johnson and welcome to the Montana Farm Bureau's virtual farm fair. Sorry that you're not that you're not getting to experience it in person. But I want to teach you a little about sheep today. I have a lamb helper here with me. And I mean we're gonna talk a little bit about the different breeds of sheep, the different um, names of sheep for the males and females, the moms and dads, and we'll talk a little bit about wool and a little bit about lambing. So it's lambing season right now, which is why we have a bunch of these babies right now. And if you see, look over here, you can see some of the moms. There's a little black lamb under that ewe, you'll notice. Some of the ewes are crossbred, so their dad, the dad of that lamb is a Suffolk Hampshire, and that's a black face breed, so his, black, his head and legs are black. Now all these ewes are white face breed, and they have a, they're known for a fine wool, and also for meat, so they're considered dual purpose, is what we call them. And they're a Targhee breed, which is spelled T-A-R-G-H-E-E. -E. They were developed They were developed in Idaho for the Rocky Mountain region of the United States. And so that's what I have here is a Targhee lamb. Um, so when the ewe is bred by the ram and she gets pregnant, she'll be pregnant for five months. And once that pregnancy gets to the end, the lambs are born, and they're either born as a single, a twin, or a triplet, normally. Sometimes you'll see more than that born to one use, so there could be quadruplets or something like that. But we hope for each you to have twins. They can raise twins pretty well. When they have triplets, I end up having to take one lamb away from them because they don't have enough milk to feed them all. And that one is what we call a bum lamb. So we'll show you those later. They're the, the bum lambs. They were born to a ewe, but then they end up with me as their mom um, and they're bottle fed. So those are kind of fun for kids. So we'll take a little tour. Here are the moms. They're called ewes, which is spelled E-W-E. -E, and that is just the name for a female sheep. I have one colored ewe. She's very pretty, black, <laughs> and very noisy. In here, we have the lambs. They can get into this into this pen, but their moms can't. So they get their own hay and pellets. So these lambs are between about four days and 14 days old. When they're born, they're fairly small, depending on if you know how many are born at one time to each mom. Some might be as small as five pounds when they're born, and some might be as big as 15. This is what we call a crossbred lamb, whereas his mother was a white targhee and his dad is a different breed. He is a Hampshire Suffolk and the dad has plain black legs and a plain black face, but them together give kind of a fun, <laughs> cute spotted lamb. So these lambs will be raised for meat and my white faced lambs will be raised for wool and for meat, depending on whether they're a male or a female. Um, there's also breeds of sheep that can be raised for milking, so like a milk cow, except for in a sheep variety. This is my guard dog, Leroy. He is a crossbreed of two different guard dog breeds, which you might have heard before. A Great Pyrenees is the first breed, and the second is an Akbosh. Um, guard dogs have been used for a long, long time in certain countries to provide protection for chickens, ducks, uh, sheep, cattle, horses, and pretty much anything you can teach them to guard. So they are born with a real instinct to know that they're supposed to protect something. So I, um, these dogs spend time with sheep when they're young and they learn to protect the sheep from predators. So in Montana, we have a lot of natural predators that will try to eat our lambs for a little snack in the summer when they're out grazing on the hillsides. So the job of Leroy is to spend his day with the sheep and keep them from getting um, hurt by predators. So things that will injure lambs could vary as far as um, bald eagles, coyotes, even all the way to mountain lions, bears, and wolves, and everything in between. Even domestic dogs will sometimes get a hold of lambs if they can. So, uh, Leroy is a very sweet boy. Not all guard dogs are quite this friendly. 
But basically what he does this time of year is just take naps all day while the sheep are in the corral and they're protected um, by the fence and their job is just to take care of their young lambs right now. But once the hillsides green up and we can go out to graze and the sheep will go and eat grass and different forbs. Sheep like a lot of different forbs, like they'll eat dandelions, tansy mustard, leafy spurge, um, invasive species and noxious weeds, which you've maybe learned about before. So Leroy will go with them and he has a partner. Her name is Luna. She's taking a nap at a different location and they will go together with the sheep. And as the sheep move and they graze the grass and the different plants, the, the dogs will stay with them and they keep an eye out and they listen carefully and they protect the flock from anything that might try to hurt them or chase them or um, kill them. So they, these are my good friends and a lot of people in Montana and other states use livestock guardian dogs to protect their flocks. Another way you can protect your flocks is sometimes people will use donkeys or llamas and they can also be taught to protect um, sheep from predators, but I have dogs on our farm. Guard dogs are typically very large breed dogs. Leroy weighs around 110 pounds and he's not yet done growing. I also have a female of a similar breed and she's a little smaller, she's about 95 pounds. But they can be all the way up to 150 depending on the breed. There's dozens and dozens of different breeds of guard dogs that will watch sheep. Yeah. Now here we are in the bum lamb pen. This is where the bums live. So like I said earlier, a bum lamb, a lot of people think that they don't have a mom or that maybe their mother died. And that can be true, but for the most part, the reason they're in here is because maybe their mother had triplets and she only has enough milk to raise two lambs. So the third lamb becomes what we call a bum or an orphan lamb. And you can see they think I'm their mom. They both want a bottle from me. So I have a little milk left in this bottle. And this is the bum's best part of the day. This is something people really love about lambs is they have really fun, happy tails. Oh, and they wanna fight over who gets to drink first. So some people will raise the bums on milk themselves. I find people to raise the bums for me and I sell them or give them away to kids for 4-H projects or for just a fun project. <laughs> All gone, kids. I'll show you how cute they are. Okay. <laughs> now let's talk about wool. You might notice my hat here. This whole hat is made out of wool. Other things that you might be familiar with that can be made out of wool are wool socks. And I have a really nice wool shirt here. So wool can be made into tons of things and a fun fact is that the inside of a baseball is actually made out of wool too. So in order to get the wool off the sheep so we can make it into things, a sheep shear who is specially trained to remove the wool from the sheep will basically give the sheep a haircut. So once the, uh, the fleece is removed from the sheep, it'll look something like this. Each breed of sheep and each individual sheep has a different type of wool. So here, this is a little bit of a coarser fleece, meaning it's a little rougher, so it might be made into something like a saddle blanket or a rug. And wool like this here is much finer and softer and feels good next to the skin and might be made into socks or even underwear or a t-shirt. Something really cool about wool is that it won't carry a flame so it's really good for people who have dangerous jobs where they might be around fire so i'll show you here will i <laughs> so here i have a flame and here i have some wool this is off of my black u that you saw pre previously in the video and you'll notice it just kind of singes and then it self extinguishes it puts its own flame out So that's why wool, that's one of the many great things about wool. It also will keep you warm in the winter and cool in the summer. Now you know some fun facts about wool, and if you're interested in learning more, go on the internet and you can look at different types.
types of sheep and what their wool is like and what it's used for. And keep an eye out to look for things that are made with wool that you might have in your house at home. Thanks!